Hey, happy day. Former President Trump, Donald Trump, he has very harsh words to say about big tech. He's saying, hey, Facebook is canceling the accounts of Freedom Convoy USA and GoFundMe is denying access to funds that belong to the Freedom Convoy. This is unacceptable. It's extremely dangerous in any country that values free expression. And is he ever right? I got to say, I mean, this GoFundMe thing in Canada raised over $10 million and they said, we're going to keep it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And finally, they're saying, we're just going to keep this freeze thing on and we're going to return the money to all of the donors. That's wrong. That's just totally wrong. Trump did announce also that the Freedom Convoy people are welcome with open arms to communicate freely on truth social media. You know, that's expected to launch by the end of the month. Kind of a cool thing. Trump Media and Technology Corp group corp <laughs> he recently raised a billion dollars you got to give this guy credit i mean he came into office as president worth three billion dollars he left office with two billion and today a year later he's worth 10 billion wow how does he do that kind of a smart guy in any event he's got this new network and he says facetime twitter hey i'm going to compete with them because we're about freedom and truth and he kind of does have a point the same president, the same guy, former President Donald Trump, he says, I also criticize Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. The Freedom Convoy is peacefully protesting the harsh policies of the far left lunatic Justin Trudeau, who has destroyed Canada. Are you letting that sink in? He's right. That is what's going on. The truck convoy, you know, I got to say, um, it's going on. And, and they're still there in Ottawa and they're camping out there doing barbecue stuff and everything else. But the city has declared a national emergency and, and, and they're trying so hard to get them out. They're, they're honking the horns all of the time and they're trying to get attention. They're getting attention. Why? Why do they want attention? Because they should, people should pay attention to them. Trudeau, he said, I won't go and see them or talk to them. Hey, I will to Black Lives Matter, but I would never do it to white people. Canadian truck drivers. He didn't say that last part, but he certainly implied it, didn't he? You know, and uh, then you got this guy. I can never pronounce his name. He's a leader of the NDP, the Socialist Party. They're all Socialist Parties now in Canada, but the one that was first, the NDP. And he now says, I accuse the convoy's leaders in believing in the superiority of the white blood line. Trudeau then sneered and said they're a fringe minority with inappropriate views. Uh, you know what? This isn't true. It's just it's not true. Nobody has done anything bad. And, and this guy, the NDP guy, he's an East Indian, I believe, and, and uh, he's always talking about bigotry and he hates white people. Right? He's always, well, so does Trudeau, but he's always saying, you white folk are terrible people. Everything you do is just bad. But you know what? I got to say, his brother-in-law donated in excess of $10,000, apparently, to the convoy. And everybody had a fit in his family about that. And then apparently the brother-in-law said, give it back to me. So why did he do it in the first place? I don't think this is me guessing now. I don't think he did it because he thought it was helping. Freedom, certainly not. He's kind of in the family of left-wing wax, right? Whether he is one or not, I don't know that. But I would suspect that he probably donated the money because he was mixed up in what he thought the convoy was about. Many truck drivers now in Canada actually are East Indian. So maybe he thought he was helping his group, his special interest group, probably. Hey, again, that's just pure speculation, supposition on my part. Now you have this Pierre Polyvier, Polyvier? I destroy everybody's name, Pierre. Sorry about that. I hope I'm kind of close, at least. He now has announced that he's going to run for the party's leadership and become Canada's next prime minister. He's probably the best of the worst, I guess. I don't know. He's a professional politician, always has been one. He's a conservative, right? And, and the party, I doubt that they'll allow him to kind of be what he wants to be if, in fact, he really wants to be something that we want. I mean, or will he be like all the other guys who have ran for the leadership? Join my blue tent. I'm this and I'm that. And then they get the place. They get the position. They get to be placed. And everything changes. Is he one of them? I don't know. Is he a professional politician that should be discounted? No, probably not. But, but here's what he's got to deal with. Here's a Quebec conservative. He quit his party. Uh, he was the party's deputy leader because he says, I want to, a role in shaping who will lead the next, you know, who next lead the party, the conservative party. And he goes on to say, whoever that person is, I want to help shape it in a progressive way. Progressive way. My left wing way. And, and Pierre is saying that he's right wing. It's a fractured party because of that merger years ago, progressive conservatives with conservatives and so on. So good luck with that.
the Mayberry, I was going to call it that. Hang on, what's the guy's name? It'll come to me. That show, Mayberry, on television, you know. Andy Griffith? Maybe let's go with that. Not Andy Griffith, somebody, I don't know. The reason Mayor Mayberry was so peaceful and quiet was because no one was married. Andy, Aunt B, Barney, Floyd, Howard, <laughs> Goober, Gomer, Sam, Ernest T. Bass, Helen and Thelma Lou and Claire, and of course, Opie, they were all single. The only married person in the entire show was Otis, and he was drunk all of the time. Think about that. Hey, y'all come back. See ya. <laughs>